Welcome to Hidden Squids Gaming. This is going to be my first impressions about the Viscount. I didn't expect to fight it today, so this was really a uh, surprise. I kind of just headed up north in the in the Crimson Court and I found him. At first, I was looking at the Viscount's health and I was like, wow, only 127? I was like, why, why should I really focus the bodies? I figured the bodies were going to have something to do with it. And obviously that theory gets verified right away because he eats from the body and receives a buff for it. Then I was thinking, you know what, the bodies actually aren't that strong, I should really just hit the bodies and kill off the bodies. I like the Viscount fight, and I'm beginning to learn that in the darkest dungeon, and by the way, that 32 critical was brutal, I thought that almost ruined my whole entire dungeon fight right there. I'm getting to realize that in the Crimson Court DLC, everything gets a lot of turns, which sometimes, you know, feels like a bad thing, but I don't think it really is, and I'm going to kind of explain why. And it's the same thing for the Fnatic, which I have a video on that that's going to come out eventually. I'm going to redo the wording. The more turns you take, DOT slowly becomes more king. And obviously the Fledgling is pretty much king at DOT. Six bleed damage on people who bleed easily. It just makes it really nice. And also with the Viscount, he takes whatever debuffs or effects or DOT is on the bodies and transfer them to himself. Now obviously he can heal that off. However, I get free damage on him, and then I make him do other actions I can kind of guide him towards. It does stink though, because the DOT on the bodies would be better to keep there than transferring to the Viscount, because the Viscount can obviously heal himself. Therefore, spread AoEs, such as like Harvest, Impale, and the other abilities on the Fledgling are really strong against the Viscount. I really wasn't expecting this fight going in, as I said, however, I was not disappointed. Reign of Sorrows is just amazing, because I could keep adding two. Now that the one body's gone, I'm going to have to keep hitting the front here. But now I have the Shield Baker back in front, and she can either impale or stab directly with the Pierce. I thought this fight... This fight was dis deceiving. It was much shorter than the Baron fight. The Baron fight took me forever. I think I, because I took it really methodically, that's why it took so long. But this fight was definitely heavy stress and heavy damage, and it was definitely a burnout fight. If this fight would have gone longer than I took to do it, I think I probably would have lost, because near the end there I have like, I think two to three afflicted heroes, it's pretty bad. And now that I'm only getting down to one big body and just the Viscount himself, the Viscount's forced to eat this body, which means he's gonna take all the DOT with him as well, and I've put a lot of DOT on this body. That's what I kind of like about it. Now obviously he's gonna heal for 50, but he's gonna get a lot of that damage right back, 16 for the first turn alone. Another thing, looking back on it now, I think I should have tried to stun the Viscount a couple more times with the Vestal, but I was playing catch up on heals so much because of that 32 critical in the beginning. If I was ever to face the Viscount again, I really did like the party I took in. I might change out the Jester for someone who can more reliably stun the Viscount. Because the Viscount really doesn't have a high stun resistance, only sitting at 50%. I mean, that's a 90% with only 140. If you give a Trinket, it's almost done if you do more stun chance then. Now, once all the bodies died, this is when the Viscount goes kind of bat crap crazy. And once again, another 26 critical. I was really nervous I was lose my Jester there, and it would have sucked because I kind of call this guy my Crimson Court Jester. He doesn't have a lot of quirks on him, negative. He has a lot of good quirks on him, and obviously he has all the skills bought and all of that, so losing him would be very detrimental. And also, I don't have a lot of Jesters sitting around. Something else to consider with the Viscount, I would definitely bring in more stress reduction trinkets. I know I already have a one on the I know I already have one on the Fledgulant, but it just didn't seem to do enough. I don't know if you can get enough stress reduction to make this matter. I think I had a decent amount and it just didn't matter. I also walked in with a decent amount on me from other fights. I actually plan on only going to one or two more rooms before I called it quits. But when you walk into the Viscount, you can't exactly call it quits. You gotta go in. And my Jester moving forward right there really screwed me over. Well, not really screwed me over, but I probably would have finished this fight in another one less turn than it took. All this stress damage I do have and all this health I've missed has only happened in six turns. That's an insane amount of stress damage, and that's why I'm saying I was wondering if I could do anything different. I finally wise up say my people are at a decent amount of health. I'm just going to stun them once. Just get rid of one turn. Because one turn is a pretty big deal if he keeps doing hungry eyes. I mean, that's like 17, 20 stress I can reduce each time. So finally stunning him was, was an excellent idea.
We're almost at the end here because we impure some nice five health left. Anyone who hits them is pretty much dead at this point. And we finish them with a nice 14. Second boss of the Crimson Court. Did not disappoint. I liked it. I liked the whole feasting idea. I liked the whole food thing. And I kind of felt like I knew the boss room was coming up. It was because for this, I didn't have it um, videoed. But I believe there's like three food curos where if you give them medicinal herb, it gives you more food. So I was thinking, it's like, oh no. I was like, there's three in a row. That's probably not an RNG luck. And you can kind of look on the map there and see it. Thank you for watching. I'll eventually get the Baron audio out, but I thought the Viscount was a lot cooler and much shorter of a fight.